So I've run out of things to tell you about concerning Geshe La, except uh, how many monks do you know who have 2,500 children? Here's, here's a monk who had 2,500 children every year when he was running Teacher's Children's Village in Dharam Salah. Uh, I mention that because um, just yesterday um, we had lunch with some of his former students who have moved uh, to this area, to Queens, and it seems that every place we go with Geshe La, whether it's on his visits to America or the far reaches of somewhere in Nepal or India or somewhere on the left coast called California, we always run into his former students. And as one of them yesterday said, he was our teacher of Tibetan language and culture, but I learned something much more important from him. I learned from him how to be a good person. And that's what we've been spending the last several days uh, doing here. Um, for those of you who want to hear him on a more informal basis, there are only two talks left uh, at our home in Westchester County, um, and they will be this Saturday, and then again at the very end of his trip after he goes to California when he's back on March 9th. So if either of those dates work for you, come on up and talk to Carol here, <coughs> and we can give you directions to our home. Uh, so tonight and tomorrow night, we turn to the last subject that we ask Geshe La to address, which is the subject of ultimate wisdom, ultimate truth, ultimate reality. And um, so by the end of tonight, you should know half of everything there is to know. <laughs> and by the end of Friday night, the last class, who knows? Geshe -la. <laughs> Thank you. You know, there's a lot of other ones you got on your bed, and you're going to know what you want to do. So, do you want to do your number? 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 Do you want to Gunjohan <laughs> Pajamales <laughs> Gesotto <laughs> Love <laughs> Sadalam, <laughs> Dolabinja Sanjay 
Sonja Nuvara Sho. Uh, in Tibetan we say Kunlong, okay? And uh, now this is uh, roughly translated as a motivation. Kunlong, okay? And uh, the motivation, pure motivation is very, very important. The pure motivation here, now we are uh, 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 trying to study uh, about a uh, great Shantideva's text, which is called Guide to the Bodhisattva's Way of Life. Uh, so every evening we touch a little bit of his teaching. And whatever we touch, we try to teach as, as good or pure as possible. Of course, we can't touch all because it's a really, really big uh, text. And uh, that is just to, first step is that by studying uh, Shantideva's Bodhisattva's way of life. In the beginning, okay, in the beginning, he says, uh, he, in the uh, first chapter, he says, Chitar Samu Muna Trirun Lokyu Kejik Ramnang Tumbada, Tishin Sanjay Tui Jalam Chikjin Sonam Lodi Tangachu, Tidak Gewa Nyamju Nila, the Dikpa Topjin Shidu, the Tine, Zobay Changju Semi Memba, Kishin Kang, Sinju Nomba Jyota. Then it goes like that, okay. I wanted to quote a few of these. Chitar Samu Muna Trirun Lokyu Kejik Ramnang Tumbada, Teaching Sanjay Tui Jalamna Chikden Sonam Lauta Tanga Chung means we are uh, now, okay, uh, uh, at this time we are all born as a human being. And, uh, and then also among the human beings, uh, there are certain people who really don't take any interest in Buddhism. And all, not necessarily Buddhism, but they don't take any interest in compassion, loving kindness, bodhicitta, and then wisdom, joyful effort, they don't take any interest, you see. Now at least, we are here, a small group, but still we are very lucky that uh, I have the opportunity to tell a little bit and you have the opportunity to listen. So these types of like life, um, uh, having the opportunity, full opportunity to uh, receive or, and contemplate and practice Buddha's teaching, having this life is uh, very, very fortunate, okay? Therefore, we, in Lamrim, we talk about the precious human life. And this Shanti Deva's text also says that uh, our rebirth, okay, we, rebirth has been like many, many, like thousands of thousands rebirth taken place. But many of the rebirths has been like a dark. No, we didn't meet any sort of like uh, teachings, okay, teaching. Uh, for example, now he puts example, that means if there's a dark, completely dark night, okay, all of a sudden, certain okay, lightning comes, okay, lightning, ta, 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 and just having a small lightning, we can uh, see uh, a few steps really nicely. So now, a life is like this, and then also, oh, this life is very precious, but it will not stay forever, you see. Uh, uh, so at present, okay, we are all okay, uh, but then uh, anything can happen. So the life is also impermanent by nature, it's impermanent, okay? And then also this life, is, this human rebirth is also, uh, 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 in, in Buddhism we say sarche, means contaminated, you see. Of course it is coming from very good karma, and then maintaining very good ethical discipline, uh, having generosity and then dedication. Out of this we were born as a, this good human rebirth. 
but still it is subject to two, get old and then finally it has to be disappeared. Because it is not, uh, it is not coming out of totally uncontaminated karma, you see. Uh, so therefore, uh, we have a very precious human life and uh, we have a lot of, why it is precious? We have a lot of opportunity. Uh, first thing is that we have a really good intelligence and then we can read, we can talk, we can think, and we can meditate, and we can practice, okay, uh, to reduce, okay, to reduce all the bad things within us and try to develop all the good things. This, this uh, opportunity is within us, you see. Whether we use in the best way or not, that is up to us. If we really use, we have the full opportunity. Uh, therefore, uh, motivation. Motivation is that now, this, this time now I'm born as a human rebirth and I can read many, many good books. I can receive many teachings. I can practice. I can do many good things. And least I can do is I will try not to harm anybody. And then if on top of this, if possible, I will try to help okay, other sentient beings as much as possible with my own practice, okay? And this way you, you just listening, okay, just to listen to this teaching is to train yourself to a good human being, okay? It has nothing to do with the, like fames or names or uh, sometimes we meet uh, in Dharamsala, we meet uh, some group of people and that they are talking about their spiritual teacher and then their spiritual teacher is very high and then I met him and then he smiled me and oh, it was so good. Ah, and then it's like a little bit like competition, you see. Uh, and then I'm so small, uh, therefore you, there's no way you can build any, uh, any sort of ego, you see. Oh, there was a small monk who was talking. Oh, that's all you can say. And, and then the main thing here is uh, your purpose of coming here is to train yourself. I mean, try to reduce your desire, hatred, anger, jealousy, all these destructive emotions. And today we are talking about the wisdom, which is an antidote to ignorance, which is the source of all the destructive emotion. So we will try, try. And then you practice, read more, study more, meditate more. And, and this is our aim, you see. So slowly, slowly, then we have to be a really good human being. A good human being, okay, very good human being, which is really needed, okay. Wherever you go, good human being is badly needed. And uh, therefore, uh, motivation has to be impossible. Okay, I really want you to cultivate bodhicitta. If not, oh, uh, loving kindness or compassion, okay? If not, just I really like to be a good human being. Yeah. Uh, we have to exist in, on this planet. We have to exist in this uh, human society. So to be a good human being is very important. So therefore the motivation, uh, whatever, uh, today we are a little bit intellectual. And uh, so, but still we I try to uh, bring into our daily life. Mm. This is uh, a motivation. I also feel very lucky that uh, you are here uh, of course, I don't know much about Buddhism, but still I have the opportunity to uh, tell what I, whatever I know, I have the opportunity to, to tell, you see. So therefore, I, was, I must say thank you so much. <clears throat> and, uh, and then now, oh, oh, we are almost coming to an end, you see, <laughs> which, is, uh, <laughs> which is very strange, <laughs> very strange. Mm. <clears throat> So now today we are touching the ninth chapter, uh, the wisdom, and uh, which is uh, if, if we have to go um, word by word, it's very difficult and also very complicated. And uh, uh, therefore, um, I just go, I just prepared a little bit. So based on this, uh, then we will try to talk, okay? <laughs> <coughs> Uh, why wisdom is so? Why wisdom is important? Okay. Uh, if you see in a normal life, 
Now, uh, uh, of course, in Europe or America, uh, paid a lot of uh, attention for the education. Actually, the, to give education means trying to make your children more wise, intelligent, uh, to be able to solve more problems, and uh, to achieve more happiness, you see. That is the goal of the education. Why we are giving education to the children? And they, they, are, they, will, be more, uh, they, they will be more intelligent, wise, okay? And they know more, and they will make less mistakes. You see, they will solve more problems, and their life will be better, and it will also have a very good impact to the society. Because of this, we are sending our children to the school to remove some of the ignorance, you see. Ignorance related with mathematics, ignorance related with the English or computer. In my case, I am full of ignorance on computer. Uh, so because of this, I make a lot of mistakes and uh, I become nervous and I make mistakes and this, because of this, I cause a lot of problem. So to remove this ignorance, we send them to a computer class, isn't it? And if someone wanted to remove the ignorance on science, they go to science class and, and then, then they become very intelligent. And then they, they really made a lot of good things for the, for the society. Why? Because they, they developed wisdom and they developed uh, 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 intelligence which is needed for all, every, every human being. And they removed a lot of ignorance, okay? So that, this is another sort of way of seeing. Actually, we are moving. We are moving towards the development of the wisdom and development of uh, uh, giving skills to solve more problems and skills to achieve more happiness, okay? But uh, now we are going to... Now, Buddhist direction is a little bit different, you see. A uh, little bit different. Uh, when I compare, our way of achieving happiness is quite far away from the normal way of achieving happiness, you see. I tell you one story. Um, in Switzerland, uh, there was a Tibetan family. And a Tibetan family were very devoted to Buddhism, and their, their children also follow Buddhism. Not so deep. Uh, and then they invited a few like, highly qualified teachers. One was again Shitomden, okay, very, very renounced spiritual teacher, spent more than 30 years in the hermit, okay, in, in Dharamsala. Very, very well accomplished uh, spiritual teacher. And then he visited. And, and then also his socks, okay, his socks are old, you see, and half went into the shoe. And his robes are very, very old, you see, very old. And then when he meditated, he put his robe on the head, and then he meditated. And then the children saw, and they whispered to his, their mother, say, Mommy, Mommy, you should not trust him, because he's a little bit problem here. <laughs> why, why, why? He, he, he really don't know how to use the proper socks. He, his sock is almost inside the shoe. And he's doing something strange things, covering this and, and then like this. And I think they were watching from the window, you see. Oh, this is something wrong there. Okay? And that, they, their way of achieving happiness is going to the school. And then after finishing school, and then they take some degree. And then they take up some professional training. And then they, they really totally fit into uh, Swiss society. And they, they feel that they are very, very wise, you see. And this monk, they thought that he is, uh, his uh, uh, screw is loose. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, uh, yeah. And, uh, but uh, actually, he is very happy. When he passed away in Taramsala, he stayed after death. Okay, after death, he stayed meditative state about 13 days. 13 days, okay, no smell. And then at the time, they have to wake him up from the state of meditation. He passed away, he's staying in this meditation. And they have to do some prayers and to wake up 
so do the uh, holy cremation and so on. 13 days. And he stayed in a very, uh, like a, a very poor cave. And I often go there. He, he told me that there was a single day which he felt unhappy in this cave. He told me personally. There was no single day, okay, single day he felt that he was not so happy in this cave. Spent 30 years. And then he was invited to Italy, okay. Uh, and then he has a lot of this uh, animal, okay, inside animal. They don't take shower every day, every day like this. So, and you know, animal lies, lies, yeah, lies, many, 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 okay. And then his disciple knows that he has a lot of lies, you see, and he invited to Italy. And then his <laughs> friend bought a new robe, completely new robe from everything, okay, inside, outside, everything, bought new two set. And then when they were about to leave Dharamsala, he, he told Keshila, no, please use this, okay? And he said, why? And he's, he was very clever, so he said, oh, uh, to Italy, we only invited Geshila, okay? Not all the friend inside. <laughs> <laughs> he said, oh, no, why? They are like my friend. They are like my children. They are like my friend. They are like ch my children. So if you don't want to invite me and my friend, and it's okay, I can stay. And then he has to say, please do whatever you like. But then in the flight, also uh, he should not uh, transfer his uh, friends used to some uh, passengers, you see. So this is how they stay, okay? But inside, the full of happiness, you see, full of happiness. Staying in that really very bad cave or hurt, okay? Only rock, okay, just rock. He said, I had a, never had even one single day that day I felt a bit unhappy here. Yeah. We often go, okay, especially in Sakadawa, like fourth month of the Tibetan calendar, we go. We always, I think, Chanchigiri. Yes, I took them uh, to. to do some offerings, you see. Sometimes we samba, candle, and the cricket water, right? Sarkata match, and candle, and samba, uh, like this. So then we go with a group of like 10 students, and we go, and then we distribute to them, you see. Just, just offer every, this is like annual uh, offering. Mm. And then we take tea there, and we discuss, and sometimes I ask some question, and uh, so now uh, I'm just comparing, okay, the, there's another way of achieving happiness and uh, removing problem, and there's a Buddhist way of achieving happiness and removing problem. The gap between them is quite big, you see, quite big. I'm not saying one is right, one is wrong, I'm not saying anything. But just, just this is like we have to compare. Because we are in this category. Now we are also touching Buddhism. And we are also living the style life of the uh, human, be human life, developed life. So now we have a choice, you see. How we are going to spend our day, our life, our time. Ah, today I'm a little bit emotional, yeah. I think it's because of you, I think. Don't you say that down the door, huh? Yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh, really? Really? Yeah. Hmm. So now we are trying to, uh, trying to, I'm trying to uh, tell, okay, not teach. I'm trying to tell you how Buddhists try to achieve happiness and solve problem. Okay? 
And then you compare. Uh, maybe you can integrate, you see, nicely. Stay in your place. And do your job. And stay in this family. That's a very beautiful, like, uh, teaching uh, by Tom Demba. He said, Tumna kimna nejya tarba yu. Pakbu genu mabal laso chi. Mandrub ringo nejya nyansong yu chiva sayu kongbu sam chai shing. Means, if you practice, if you practice, even you remain as a lay person, having family members, you can achieve nirvana or enlightenment if you practice, okay? If you don't practice, even you stay in hermit, okay, in an isolated place, uh, you might not be achieve anything. Instead, you might go to uh, lower realm. Tumna kimna neja tarbayu, pakbu jeno mabala, like, uh, <clears throat> like Marpa, Milarepa, there are many great lay teachers, you see. Yeah. Pabu uh, Jena Marba is now his name, so example. If you practice like Milarepa, there's a great opportunity to achieve enlightenment or nirvana. If you don't practice, even you remain in the hermit, still you might be born in the lower realm, you see. Nyansong is lower realm. Uh, she was. Uh, for example, some of the animals, like, uh, they stay in a very isolated place, but uh, they don't practice anything. Quite similar, you see, it, it can happen to us also. So therefore, it is not necessarily to be like in this sort of role, or have to spend all their life in the monastery, or uh, in, the, in the cave. Not necessary, okay. It's mind, okay. The training of the mind is the most important thing. Train your mind, okay? Wherever you are, whether you are wearing a black cloth, a white cloth, a yellow cloth, red cloth, doesn't matter. Make your mind clean and white. That is possible, okay? Yeah. <clears throat> so now, uh, uh, Buddhism talks only about mind, okay? Uh, they are, they, we, we categorize it. There are certain sort of mind which are very destructive, uh, certain sort of mind which are uh, very, very constructive, and the possibility of cultivating many, 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 many wonderful minds, and there's a possibility to remove all this ugly mind, destructive minds. Okay. The Buddhism is this. Whether you sit like this, or sit like this, or sit like this, it doesn't matter much, but main thing is train your mind to a really healthy mind, okay? So for that, uh, we talked uh, quite a lot about the uh, bodhicitta and uh, the benefit of the bodhicitta. And then also we talked a little bit about the, how to cultivate bodhicitta. And then, how to maintain bodhicitta, okay? How to maintain bodhicitta uh, by practicing uh, vigilant and mindfulness. And, uh, and, uh, uh, and then we talked about the um, uh, uh, tolerance. Uh, uh, mind has to be really calm and tolerant. Mind should not be disturbed. And by having hatred, anger, it can destroy like so much of your merit and the stability of the mind, tolerance, and then joyful effort. And, uh, and then also we talked about the uh, meditative uh, concentration. Uh, just only a small part of it. Okay. Every chapter we, we touch a very small part of the uh, chapter. Mm. So now today we are talking about wisdom. Uh, yeah, now here's the Yala Tida Tamjan Tube Sharab Sung. Uh, the first, okay, first teaching, okay. Yeah. Uh, the, the, all these teachings, okay, uh, about joyful effort, generosity, and alertness of vigilant or uh, discipline and uh, single point meditation, whatever, compassion, love, uh, Whatever is taught, okay, the main teaching of Buddha is to, to, uh, to have a really good understanding and practice 
how to develop wisdom. This is the main thing, okay? All these are supporting this uh, uh, wise wisdom mind, okay? Why? And then the next uh, verse says, we all wanted to be free from suffering, okay? Therefore, without developing wisdom, there's no other door, okay? There's no other door to make us free from suffering, okay? Uh, so therefore, uh, the today, uh, uh, we are trying to, uh, you, you, you understood, isn't it? Why wisdom is so important? Okay. Deva, uh, one of the main disciples of Nagarjuna, uh, Arya Deva stated in his uh, uh, 400 verses of uh, Madhyamika teaching, he said, Shikonyiba Mepatang means there's no other door than wisdom based on emptiness. And this is the only door, okay? This is the only antidote to remove all destructive emotions, especially the sources of the destructive emotion, which is ignorance, you see. In our modern education, we are developing wisdom and removing certain sort of ignorance. These are all like uh, wisdoms are, let's say, conventional wisdom. And it, it removes certain sort of ignorance, okay? Very superficial ignorance. But this teaching of wisdom, it really removes the, 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 the worst and then deepest and the most cruel sort of uh, destructive emotion, which is ignorance, okay? By having this and all the other ignorance arises within us. And to remove this, for example, like if I really have to remove the ignorance of a computer, the only possibility is I have to learn the computer, okay? I need to be expert in computer. Then I will be free, you see? Then I will have no ignorance on computer. Then I will handle, do everything with computer easily, you see? In the same way, if you really wanted to be free from samsara, if you wanted to be free from destructive emotions, the only way is to remove ignorance, you see? If you remove ignorance, then all this destructive emotion will not arise with us and we will not suffer. And then this is the only way, okay, only way we can be free from samsara or source of samsara. This is the only way to achieve nirvana. This is the only way to achieve enlightenment. So to achieve enlightenment, the wisdom and bodhicitta are equally important, okay. These are, these are like two wings of the uh, birds. If the birds are across, Ocean has to have two wings, you see. On one wing, can't cross. Kunzo tin shoyang kabu jaju jing ambo ta jabo tin kibe ngambe tundo tan kibe lungi shoto jabe yonde jazu paru shoto draw. The 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 chant kirti he he explained these two are like a wing, okay. Putichita and wisdom. If they practice this together in a balanced way, and that is the best thing to achieve enlightenment. So we try to, this is the best way, to remove ignorance, obstacles, okay, obscurations, whatever. <clears throat> okay. Uh, so why uh, wisdom, what we are talking, why it is so important, okay? And... Uh, it is very important uh, because uh, we suffer, uh, we suffer, suffer because of the ignorance. Because of ignorance, we develop attachment and we develop anger, hatred, jealousy, ego, all these things. Because of this, okay, then we do many bad things, we earn bad karma, and then we suffer, okay? So the, if you really want to be free from these things, the only way is to develop wisdom. And then to develop wisdom, how I can develop wisdom? Then he says, you have to understand the ultimate reality. In the same way as I said, okay, if I really know what, how the computer's really functioning, okay, I know perfectly well, then I will not make any mistake, you see. I will be, never be nervous. I will not get angry. In the same way, if you really know 
all the phenomena, okay, whether we hear or eat or taste or see, whatever phenomena around us, if you really understand the ultimate truth, okay, how they are really existing, ultimate truth. If you really know this, okay, and then this is the wisdom, and this will kill or remove the ignorance, okay. One say, ignorance says that all these phenomena has a really independent existence. And wisdom says, no, it has no independent existence. And it, 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 it proves that it has no independent existence with the logics. And then, then they fight. And the more we practice wisdom, the ignorance has to be slowed down, you see. Yeah. I can't say that this is independently existing. One, after one min, few minutes ago, I say, oh, this is independent existence. A few minutes after I say, no, this is not independent. Then I will, be, I will be treated as a mad, you see. Because either this one or this one, OK? It cannot uh, exist <coughs> both in independent existence and non-independent existence. Not possible. So, so therefore, uh, No, a little bit tricky. <laughs> so importance of wisdom becomes a little bit disappearing. <laughs> Do you see importance? Okay. Mm. Mm. I think I, I did talk about uh, all these destructive emotions like anger, jealousy, and I really talked a little bit. You see, say. How can we prove that these are originated from ignorance? With this, if possible, with experience, okay? We, 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 if we just think, then we will learn that these are really mistaken mind. Anger is mistaken mind. And strong greed is a mistaken mind. How it is mistaken? Where is mistaken coming from? And then not knowing the reality as it is. Either it went a little bit too much or too little. Bias mind, okay? And the bias mind happens if we don't understand the exact reality, truth, see? And then we, uh, we talk about true truths, OK? Uh, conventional truth and ultimate truth. And uh, in some texts, they say this, 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 what? Deceptive truth? Decise, this, de- deceiving truth or something? Yeah, yeah, I think something like that. Uh, but we use only conventional truth and ultimate truth. And uh, so some uh, translation they use as uh, uh, decept- deceptive truth, and then ultimate truth, okay, yeah. Uh, so, so in Tibetan we say kunzop demba and thundam demba, okay, kunzop demba, thundam demba. So LD, any, any phenomena, okay, any phenomena has an existence, okay. It has the existence of uh, conventional truth, and then it has existence of ultimate truth. And uh, we cannot separate, okay, we cannot separate, you see, the only uh, conventional truth existing there and the ultimate truth existing there is not possible. On one object, okay, one specific object, on this object, okay, there is a, it is existing as a conventional way, and then if we search, it has an ultimate existence also, yeah. And... uh, so we, when we say, OK, this is pen, and this is for writing, and it's very good, and uh, it's new, and uh, black in color, all these are we talking about the conventional truth, OK, conventional truth. And it is made in this factory, and I bought yesterday, and now I use this uh, about uh, four hours. So maybe I can use another two weeks. All this we are talking about the conventional sort of uh, 
function or conventional existence of this band. Okay? Uh, and then, then we go to, okay, now how, how this is really made, okay, how it is made, then we are going a little bit deeper. How it is made? Who, who designed this? Okay, who designed this? What material they use? Which factory they produced? And how did they make it? Okay, and we are going, still we are not searching the ultimate truth, but still we are going a little bit deeper, okay. Almost we are saying that it is not just by itself. It is made by some people, designed by some people, and made in a factory. And so then this, this also shows that, okay, this pen is coming from there, okay, from there. Someone, very wise person, designed, and in a rich people's factory it is produced, and then it was in the shop, then I bought, okay. It's just telling how, how it was existed and how it really moved, okay, moved slowly, slowly towards me. These are talking about conventional, on a conventional level, but then it says something, it says something. Oh, okay. It is like, it is not exactly how I see this, you see. When we see this, we simply see a pen. We simply see a pen and nothing, okay, nothing. And sometimes almost we don't see where it is made, uh, or the, the, the factors and also the material they use. We don't see, we don't see. Just we see a pen, okay? And almost like we are seeing the pen as like, a, it's, it is almost like independent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You just examine yourself, okay? You examine yourself. Where it is coming from, who made, we don't see. Just we see only pen. Almost like we are saying that this pen is there by itself. Pen is here just by itself. Okay. And uh, we don't go so detailed. It was produced in uh, 2015, and then it went to the show. That, that, that we don't account, you see. No. <clears throat> so our way of searching the pen, uh, it, it has a conventional level, OK? Uh, mainly about the functions, why it is made. All these are more related with the uh, conventional uh, existence, talking about conventional uh, existence. And then we, uh, that is not enough. Why? Because uh, even, we, even we talk about this, still we might have a strong attachment to this pen, you see. Still we might have very strong attachment, okay? Or sometimes if, if, if this pen doesn't write properly, we get angry and break, throw in the dustbin. As if this pen has done us something very terrible thing. We get angry, see. It is turning very well, then we say, oh, this pen is so good, okay. I almost developed a very, very strong attachment to my mobile phone. It was so useful, you see. When earthquake was happened in Nepal, it was very useful, you see. Oh, my best friend. And wherever I go, I have to carry. And I really don't want to lose this. In the shop, I lost everything, OK? But I didn't lose my iPhone. But that was very, very important. And I just put it next to my head. It's here, OK? And in the bag also, I put it in a very safe place. There's a small shield inside, and just next to the shield so that it will not hit on the wall, it will not break. It says a lot, you see. In one way, I'm perceiving this mobile phone as a, oh, very uh, solid and independent. And another way, I see also, oh, this is impermanent. Impermanent, okay, it can be broken or damaged, okay. So through this, we are going a little bit deeper, deeper of the, 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 all the things what we are using and saying. And uh, then ultimately, still we develop a lot of attachment. Because of this, okay, because of this, we, we develop a 
very strong attachment, you see. Here, you, you develop a very strong attachment towards very good things, you see. In the village, even the broken glass, they have a very strong attachment because they don't have many glass. Broken glass is very expensive in the village. Even if it's broken, they have to treasure this, you see, like a best glass in, in here. Then you say, then, then you start thinking, okay, oh, yesterday we talked, okay, oh, this glass is so impermanent, and I'm also impermanent, and we will never remain forever together, you see. Oh, we will not remain forever together, yeah, yes. And this, I think we roughly we understand, you see. Then why? Why this impermanent? Why I'm, why I'm impermanent, you see? And then you see, because this is made out of many, 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 many materials, you see, made, and then it produced. Therefore, it is subjected to change. Oh, I see. That means it is depending upon so many other factors. And then you started thinking, oh, then it is not independent, you see. It has so many factors which made it exist, you see. Then dependent and arise. Depend on so many other factors and then it existed, arise, you see. Oh, therefore, this glass has no independent existence. How you, how you get? Do I go slowly, slowly? Huh? <laughs> and then we started really getting into the ultimate reality of the glass, you see. If you really understand, oh, this glass is, a, it's depending upon so many factors, and then it only existed. And it has no independent existence, you see. No independent existence. And then our view, okay, our view or our perception of perceiving this glass as a really like solid and developed attachment and very rigid, everything dissolves slowly, slowly. Oh, uh, this is coming out of so many other factors. Other factors, okay. It has no independent existence. And it can, it can exist a certain sort of period of time, but changing, changing, changing. And that it will ultimately it will be no more, you see. Because it is coming due to cause and condition. All the time it's changing, 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 changing. And from there we, we understand that okay, I see nothing is really existing independently. Nothing is exist by itself, by itself. Or oh, I'm here, but I didn't I have no other factor which made me exist, but I'm just here. Nothing like this. Through this, we are really, really going towards the understanding of ultimate existence of the phenomena, any phenomena. And then you try to see, when, when you get angry, you see how anger grows. Many, many factors, you see. Right. <clears throat> this is easy, isn't it? <laughs> this is this is easy. <laughs> My uh, philosophy teacher used to tell me a story, okay? Not me, in our class, he used to tell a story. One of his di disciples, okay, his student, who was quite good in philosophical study, and they were teaching about emptiness, okay? And uh, he, uh, the teacher also praised a little bit to him. N normally, uh, um, the teacher never prays, you see, disciple, but he just instinctively he prays a little bit of this disciple. And then this disciple thought, okay, student taught that, I think among the students I'm quite wise, okay. 
because my teacher praised me among many. He has a little ego problem, okay? <laughs> and then one day, this teacher, very clever, okay, very clever, he wanted to really examine how much he understands. So then he said, hmm, uh, you are very good. So do you do some meditation on emptiness? He said, yes, 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 okay, a lot of respect, yes. And he asked, what is the color of emptiness? And did this disciple said, blue. Okay. <laughs> and the teacher becomes so furious, so furious, and he said, is this your emptiness, you see? And then, that, yeah. Sometimes we are elevated, okay, elevated by this uh, ego, okay, ego. And we really don't know where we are, okay, how much we understand. And uh, talking very high thing, but uh, understanding is uh, almost like on the zero level, it's, it's possible. Therefore, we have to be very realistic. Why I'm talking so simple? Slowly, slowly driving, slowly, slowly driving, because you have to practice, you see, in your daily life. If I say, okay, you have to practice emptiness of buddhichitta, and the buddhichitta itself is very far from us, you see. It's just table, pen, is very near to us. Huh? So, <laughs> put your feet on the ground, and then try to study emptiness, okay? And, uh, <laughs> Now many, many funny stories coming, you see. <laughs> no, story, no, we don't have time to tell the story, yeah. <clears throat> uh, importance and then true truth, okay? Uh, uh, conventional truth and ultimate truth. And conventional truths are the phenomena which we use, talk, see, hear, read, all these are conventional truths, okay? And, uh, of course, I will quote uh, this teaching and then I will try to uh, define, okay, define. But now I'm explaining. Mm -hmm. And ultimate truth is the, uh, ultimate truth is the point that, like this pen. If I say writing and the name of the pen and color, all this are, we are talking about the conventional truth of the pen. And if we search, okay, the ultimate, how it is really existing, okay, how it is really existing, then we go to the deeper level, saying that it is really existing, depending upon others, okay. There's no way it can exist without depending upon others. Then we are going really deep. And that is, we are talking about emptiness, you see. And that is called the, uh, ultimate truth. And uh, I can say appearance, okay, appearance, when it comes to the appearance, emptiness and the conventional truth has no, uh, ultimate truth and the conventional truth has no difference. Appear in the appearance, okay. And Oh. <laughs> in, in Shanti there was text, okay? No. Huh. Well, no. This is finished. Now this is uh, uh, the, the ultimate truth, okay, ultimate truth uh, uh, to be perceived or understood by a normal sort of mind is not possible. See? Yeah, not possible. And uh, uh, why uh, the, the, the perception of a normal mind is uh, 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 mm, has a lot of appearance of uh, um, I mean, conventional truth, you see. So therefore, uh, to, to have the perception, clear perception of, of 
ultimate truth is not possible to this mind. And uh, then the, this mind has to be, then you see. And then also, if you have to uh, explain about the emptiness by words, also it's not enough. It is very difficult to understand exactly by the conventional mind, as well as it is very difficult to explain by normal sort of words, you see. Of course, I explain a little bit. That is the maximum I can explain, you see. The, 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 the main essence understanding will come if you really try to understand. With this, you contemplate. With this, you meditate. And again, you read, read, and think, and contemplate, and then meditate. And slowly, slowly, okay, you will get the real understanding of emptiness, you see. Just simply by words explaining, you will get a rough idea, but the words are not, far not enough to explain emptiness, you see. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, maybe some questions, I think, yeah. Yeah? Um, uh, mm. Thank you very much. Um, I just wanted to ask you about, um, uh, I wasn't exactly sure what you meant about uh, appearance and emptiness and appearance and conventional truth. I was wondering if you could just speak a little bit more about that. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, this is difficult. Um, in English, I think, at present, I think there's not an uh, exact term of uh, in Tibetan we say ngochik ngothate and dokbachik dokbathate. These terms, I think, uh, still it is, I have, I never seen any translation. Ngochik is, ngochik is same appearance. For example, like this, when you look to this book, the book and its shape, its color, you will, it will appear same to your eye. Yeah? And its emptiness, its conventional existence, everything appears same. Because when you see the book, books we see, of course we can't say that now I saw emptiness. That we can't say. But it, it is appearing to us, whatever quality, okay, whatever uh, factors, qualities, uh, color, impermanent nature, big, small, yellow, blue, whatever, okay. It's all appearing to us. Our eye sees this, okay? So therefore, including the emptiness of this book, impermanence of this book, everything appears to us. There's no different appearance, you see? Yeah. Uh, but then, if you say, okay, color of this book and the shape of this book, are they same? No, no. Then we say no. Why? Because we have to use two words. Shave, we have to use, okay. We can't use the shave, the words color, we can't use for the shave. Okay? And, uh, uh, and vice versa, okay? And when you, say, when you say color, we have another picture in our mind. Shave, we have another picture. Okay? How big, small, again we have another picture. But when it appears to us, shape, color, everything, it appears to our eye all together. Now, so uh, I, I don't know in English, you see, ngochi ngothate. And then conventional truth and ultimate truth are, when it comes like ngochi ngothate, they are ngochi, okay, same appearance. But then same appearance, uh, and I think we, we, we have to stop here. <laughs> the terms are a little bit difficult. Right there. I'm searching exact term. Uh, up to now, I, I read, uh, uh, I think best term, terminology was written by, I don't know best, but uh, one of the terminology, Buddhist terminology was uh, is a dictionary called by Tseba And uh, there I didn't find. Uh, so still I think uh, we need to search.
<coughs> I think it has to go with explanation. Then only it will be uh, easy to understand, isn't it? <coughs> I didn't make any contributions for you. I, okay, so you have to, you have to say yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Your question was very good. Yes. Yeah. Hmm? Why is the word emptiness used to explain the ultimate nature of all phenomena as existing uh, dependently on mm -hmm. other things? Why do we call that emptiness? Yeah. <clears throat> and also, I think this is a little bit of a direct translation from Tibetan. We say Tongba Nyi. Tongba is empty. A little bit different, you see. Tongba Nyi means only empty or something like that in Tibetan term. And uh, so, of course, there's uh, quite a lot of misunderstanding also. Today, oh, Sophia was also telling about emptiness, isn't it? She was explaining her own understanding, but which, was, which was true, you see. Yeah, uh, quite a lot of uh, uh, misunderstanding. But I, I don't know, maybe there's no other term. But yeah, why it is say empty? Okay, no. so we use like this, tongba, okay, tongba. This book, okay, this book, we say, okay, this book is not existing by itself, okay? Therefore, therefore, it is empty of independent existence. Empty of independent existence. There's no independent existence on this book. Therefore, there's an emptiness of the independent existence because there's no independent existence on this book. Empty of independent existence, from there, okay, I think Tibetan term also comes. And uh, with the explanation, okay, uh, if we say emptiness, then it makes some sense. Otherwise, yes, it is also tricky thing. Empty of independent existence means there is an emptiness. What is this emptiness? Emptiness of independent existence. Why? Because it is existing depending upon others. When it is existing depend upon other, then it is not existing by itself. When it is not existing by itself, then it is empty of independent existence. So in this way, we have to <laughs> understand. <laughs> I think I'm repeating again, again. <laughs> sorry. Do you want to take a break? Yeah, I think we... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have a question about your water glass. Which one? That one. Okay. So in order for, uh, I wonder if you can tell me if this is correct. In order for the water glass to be here right now, there are a number of conditions. For example, someone had to bring sand to a factory. Someone had to heat up the sand. They had to make a glass. It had to come here. If any one of those conditions were to not be true, then there could be no glass. Yes. And the continuing existence of your glass also relies on conditions. For example, it needs to be not dropped on the floor. If yeah. that condition were to end, then the glass would also end. Yeah, yeah. Is yes. this correct? Yes. The, uh, its identity as a glass will lose. Yeah. Yeah. But all of those, it's dependent yeah, yeah, upon yeah, yeah. all of those conditions. Yeah. But then, uh, maybe it's good. Uh, I, I'm, I'm a little bit uh, feeling guilty that uh, I didn't ex explain the uh, conventional truth and ultimate truth of the lower tenets, you see. It touches, you see. The lower tenets, their ultimate truth is Kangla uh, Seldang. Means their ultimate truth is okay, lower tenet. I was talking about the Madhyamika tenet, okay? So they say that uh, the anything, okay, anything like glass, okay? Now it is glass. And, uh, and then if we break, 
and then it, it loses its identity. And that shows that this glass is not the ultimate truth. It's a conventional truth, OK? Uh, and then, not so, uh, not so much logic, but if we have a wood, OK, just piece of wood, if we cut this wood into like, uh, like 10 pieces, still it's wood, OK? The identity of wood never lose. Therefore, this is the ultimate truth. Yeah? This is one tenet. And then it goes a little bit higher, a little bit higher. The things which we can divide are conventional truth. And, uh, and then uh, something which we cannot divide, okay, if we just can't identify, then we will find the smallest particle which we cannot divide. And that can be our ultimate truth. And which also has a mistake, you see, also has a mistake. And the other says, whatever is uh, <coughs> impermanent sort of nature, uh, ultimate truth, and has seen, having like permanent uh, nature is a conventional truth. So there are different things used. There are different views, OK? And that it all have to be slowly, slowly defeated, OK, by logics and examples and like this. And then we have to establish that any Every phenomena are not existing independently, okay? Because they are coming from due to causes and conditions, okay? Due to factors, and then again we explain, okay? That is okay. But then we ex explain everything is existing, just simply giving a designation. Is God? I am existing as a Pema Dorje because I, I was given the name Pema Dorje, see? Because of this designation, I am existing as a Pema Dorje, okay? If no one given name as Pema Dorje, instead of this I am given Dorje, then I am existing as a Dorje. This is existing as a glass because it's designated as a glass, okay? If it was designated as a table, we will use as a table. Please give me a table of glass, uh, water. <laughs> So the existence is just existing anything. Without designating, there's no way anything can exist. So it has to it exist because we designate it. Therefore, it is depending upon the designation, and then it exists. Therefore, it has no independent existence. This is a little bit difficult, you see, a little bit difficult. Yeah. So we break, yeah. So we break. <clears throat> One more question. <clears throat> Thank you, Geshe. Yeah. Uh, um, I'd like to ask you about the best moment that, to meditate on emptiness. How to prepare for that moment? For instance, if you're very attached to something, I would think it is difficult to meditate on the non-independent nature of something, or if you're very angry, how do you prepare yourself to have a successful meditation in those states of mind? Mm -hmm. uh, you're talking about the meditation on emptiness, isn't it? Yeah. The meditation on emptiness is, uh, uh, in the beginning, it has to be meditated through analytical meditation. Analyze, OK? More you analyze, deeper your understanding will go. And then your mind will focus on there, you see. It's all done with analytical med meditation. Because search the truth, you see, search the truth. Is it this way or that way? Is it correct or how, am I perceiving right or wrong? Is there any difference how I perceive and how it exists? So we have to do a lot of exercise, you see. 
Oh, I'm really perceiving exactly how it is really existing. You see, so our mind is also polluted because of the ignorance. Therefore, time to time we have to check how I'm perceiving the phenomena, either it's pen or man or whatever, okay? Check, and then how it really exists. How we exist, how we, whatever we did today, we analyze, okay? It, it is existing depending upon so many small, small factors, you see. Small, small, millions of millions of factors, you see. And, and then it exists. So am I really perceiving it this way? If you perceive this way, then you will slowly, slowly, if you think that, okay, now I can say there's no independent existence. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> But if you're very angry... No, no. That time you don't do meditation on emptiness. Right. Just, just clear your mind. Take a break. Breathe in and out. Let it go out, you see. You have to make yourself free from this anger. Yes. If your mind is filled with anger, no, none of the meditations are good. It's and not it's possible at yeah. all. Especially if the anger is very high, not possible. You have to... Make your anger down by breathing in and out. Or I normally, uh, some uh, so small children gave me some ideas, you see. You take cold shower. <laughs> no. <laughs> or you bicycle. Yeah, bicycle. Uh -huh. You have to balance. And then the target of the anger goes away. Cold shower. Or you pet animal, you okay? cat or dog. Any yes. small fire. Your mind goes on this smooth far. Do this again, again. And your anger will anger will go away. So breathing in out or taking cold shower, mm -hmm. very good. Yeah. <laughs> so and then and then after that you can do the meditation. And yeah. is there a parallel in attachment? Are there? Do you have to do something to reduce same, attachment same, same. before you meditate? If you are having a really uh, strong attachment, okay. Uh, strong attachment means you have like uh, your uh, mind also feels, your body also feels, okay. At that time, you have to handle your attachment, make it down. During that time, your mind is occupied, conquered by this destructive emotion. Therefore, you have to resolve this by thinking what we talked yesterday. Impermanence. Yeah, impermanent, all these things, yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. And, uh, and then especially when you do meditation on emptiness, and then your meditation has to be really consistent with emptiness, okay? Don't mix different types of meditations. And then you will ne never get anywhere, you see? So your focus is just analyzing and trying to see, trying to understand emptiness and, and try to see how I perceive and how it is really existing. And then when you, especially it is very good to, or to analyze oneself. Sometimes we think that, oh yes, I myself is depending upon other, and then, and then, then it, I'm existing, so I'm in empty of independent. Still there's a something in your head, you see. For example, a uh, mm, few stories, okay. One of my teachers told me that he was doing a practice, okay. And one day, just near to his door of her, his cave, which was almost like no door, like wild, uh, what do you say? Not tiger, smaller than tiger, leopard, type of leopard came. And he was so afraid. <coughs> Because of the afraid, and he really realized that there is a something we perceive, you see. Al almost like, a, and also we also feel sometimes we have stomach pain, stomach pain, strong st stomach pain. We feel like, oh, I really like to stomach uh, put there and I a little like free. <laughs> it's uh, also like this, you see. So these are, our perception is wrong. And then we are falling in the uh, very deep, and we feel that body is feeling, but I really wanted to go 
uh, away from this body, which is also not exist. But that, that perception of I am uh, other than body, and there's independent ex existence, you see. So many, there's many signs. So you, time to time you have to really practice fear when fear comes, when the death comes, or when some, someone attacks you. And how you feel, okay? Uh, you feel uh, like body is, uh, uh, there's an eye which is almost like totally away from body. You will feel you to check. All these are how I perceive myself as an independent existence. So thinking like I'm really existing, depending on these things, depending on these things, depending on this, this, depending on this, I'm really existing. You just go on thinking this, analyzing, and getting the taste of this experience of this. Slowly through this also will be will go away. Of course, this is uh, <coughs> not very uh, Mm, easy, not very easy. Uh, uh, so, uh, I don't know, I'm adding something? No, please, pre precise, okay. Yeah. It's related. Uh -huh. it's Just precise, okay, please. Well, yeah, yeah, sorry. You, yeah. Continue, you have to be very precise, yeah. No, this has nothing to do with emptiness. She's asking emptiness, you see. Well, she's talking about anger. Well. No, anger I talked, you see. Yes, but yeah. it isn't enough simply to take a cold shower. You have to do something about yeah, it. That is what I told, yeah. That is what I told, yeah. How to address the situation and how to approach it. Any existing situation with the object of resolving something that's causing anger. That is, we already talked, you see. Uh, we already talked in the sixth chapter, you see. Yeah, how to resolve and, yeah, yeah, yeah. We talked, yeah. <coughs> Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Five degree wind chill factor one day and bring the other no umbrella. <laughs> what um, did you, yeah, I like, guess? Okay. Um, so, <coughs> trying to be clear, I don't know if I'm going to yeah, <laughs> succeed. Precise, yes. um, you're saying um, meditation on emptiness uh, is basically analytical yeah. meditation, which yeah. is wisdom. Yeah. Uh, then our perception uh, through this analytical uh, meditation become more uh, about the, uh, the uh, absolute or the ultimate truth. Yeah. Uh, our perception is slowly slow change. Yeah, so, so our conventional tr truth, which is basically the way we see things, most of us mainly, mm -hmm. uh, start to maybe uh, be balanced with the ultimate truth. And what is balanced with the ultimate truth? The conventional truth, because you said there no, is no, no. no one... No, don't take anything. When you are doing meditation on emptiness, just focus on emptiness. Don't bring um, uh, conventional truth there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, so, so I guess my question is, uh, uh, when you are able, some sometime, someday, in the other life, maybe, to uh, perceive things uh, with ultimate truth, then there is no more attachment. Uh, you have to practice. Oh yeah. Yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But this is the ul the ultimate goal. Yes, yes. Why? Because I I think I explained. You see, the. The ultimate goal of doing meditation on emptiness is to develop wisdom. And the wisdom is the antidote to ignorance. Okay? If we, are, if we fight against ignorance, and then all attachment, anger will automatically be removed, you see. Because these are rooted to ignorance. Yeah. Means, uh, if you want to fight each and every destructive emotion, it is also possible. But if you really fight against ignorance, okay, if you are able to remove ignorance, and then you almost done that you already also fought against the attachment or anger, everything. You see, just fighting with anger, ignorance will not go. 
But removing ignorance, others will go. Yeah. Because this is the root of source. Yeah. What is how, we, how we can practice love to our own child yeah. and not be ignorant to the fact that it's not his or she is not permanent. <laughs> this is, uh, uh, yes, I think uh, the, the, whatever I need to teach is all, already taught, you see. If you apply, uh, if you understand emptiness on this, okay, on a book or pen, and you, there will be no problem to understand emptiness of your child. Okay? And, uh, and then when you have this understanding of your, how your child is really existing, and then you will understand the ultimate truth that it is dependent upon other factors, you see? And then by this, you will learn what factors are good for your child, and what factors are, has to be removed. Because good and bad is also coming due to other factors, you see. Yeah. So understanding. Now we are talking only about understanding, okay? When you say meditation, meditation, first we have to read a lot of books, study, 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 first stage. After reading, you get a, some sort of understanding, okay? And then bring this understanding together and try to really contemplate and make it so true to you. Oh, this is really true, okay? And after that, then you meditate. Yeah. Because meditation is the last stage. Yeah. So in Tibetan we say Thoba. And Thoba then Samba. Samba then Gomba. No. Thö, Sam, Gom. These three stages. Thoba is study. Listen teaching, study, read book. This is all Thoba. From there you get a lot of information okay, about emptiness or bodhicitta, whatever. And the, having this correct information, you just try to analyze, think. Make it so true, you see, by analyzing. And when you feel that this is totally true, and then you meditate. Means you think again, 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 again. Make it so familiar to you. And your, your mind will be sharp, 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 okay? At the time, when you really understand the emptiness, then there's not much to analyze, you see. You already understood the emptiness. And then you combine single body and meditation together. And that will be the best tool to remove ignorance, or subtle imprint of the ignorance also. Now, ultimately, okay, this wisdom has to be again practiced with the Single point in meditation. Yeah. Do you get the point? When you analyze, you find the ultimate truth, okay? That will be the ultimate answer. And then, then the mind doesn't need to analyze again. Only think, think. And by focusing this without analyzing, thinking on this, and you can bring your single point in meditation there, on the emptiness, practice together, and then your mind will be very sharp, totally focused, wise, very sharp, and this will remove the ignorance, and even the subtle imprints of the ignorance. Yeah. But this is uh, need a lot of practice, okay? Yeah, lot of lot of practice. Yeah. And uh, I can say. Uh, some people, just by seeing their face, they're so interested, okay? This is a good sign. So interested, so interested, you see. Instead of falling asleep, they're interested, you see. It's a very good sign. Yes. Yeah. This shows that uh, one has some sort of imprint in the past life that uh, they received teaching of emptiness or practiced or something like that, you see, which is a very good sign. And if you have some sort of experience, very good sign, you see. Some, uh, by hearing the emptiness, experiencing emptiness, you started 
become very emotional, really like to cry or something like that. Or sometimes this uh, goosebumps wave goes uh, like this. And that is a very good sign. Then you really have to study emptiness and try to meditate. You will really succeed, you see. Luigi Pabu Namba Juba Kari Ba Tela Dropa Sanjay Luigi Soro Yu Ra Uma Juba Nala Luigi Pabu Pabu Namba Sanjay And then Mikju Namba Luigi Pabu Namba Juba Kari Tela Dropa Sanjay Luigi Soro Yu Tini Nye Varte Me Nune Ti Inde Yeah, that is the best vessel to teach emptiness. Yeah. Thank you very much for this beautiful teaching on emptiness, and may, may all sentient beings benefit from it. Um, I have a question, it's kind of a twofold question. Uh, when you're doing the meditation on, on the emptiness, so in that process, could you talk a little bit about the role of the blessing of the guru, and how do you bring that in to the meditation on emptiness? <clears throat> oh, uh, uh, this is very important, you see, uh, especially uh, when I was reciting this prayer before I keep teaching. In this teaching, uh, I'm doing prayer. Uh, the, the title of this prayer is uh, Foundation of Good Qualities. That means the spiritual teacher is the foundation of all the good qualities, you see. The devotion to the spiritual teacher, the faith or trust in the uh, spiritual teacher is very important. Uh, and then again, this uh, Arya Deva in his uh, 400 verses of uh, teaching, he also said that Sona Membe Chuetila Tetum Tayan Semanyut. Means to understand emptiness, okay, you need to have an accumulation of a lot of good karmas. Because this is such a rich food. And to digest, to eat and to digest, one's body has to be very healthy. Now, in this emptiness, one's mind has to be very healthy. Therefore, need to have a very good accumulation of good karma. And that having good karma will digest the real understanding plus practice of emptiness. Uh, and then relate with the emptiness, okay. Even you have a profound understanding, of course it has a lot of potential, but having like I think emptiness, I think I think this must be emptiness. Okay? Even you have this sort of perception will really shake the destructive emotions, you see. So therefore, yes, the one of the main factor to, to earn merit, especially when you do like uh, preliminary practices, mantra, okay, mantra, preliminary practices, linked with spiritual teacher is very important. And uh, so when I'm reciting this prayer, okay, I try to think of my teachers, and of course, not all is quite difficult, but most of the teaching I received from his Holy Dalai Lama. And then I embody him as an embodiment of all my spiritual teacher. And then I say, please bless me. The bless here, blessing here is, uh, I think, a little bit different understanding. By thinking his teaching, his good quality, and it it gives us so much inspiration, wanting to do. That is blessing, okay? Not like a touching uh, some water or... Uh, this is, okay, sign of blessing, but it's, this is not the real blessing. Real blessing is... Uh, ultimate blessing is the teacher gives a teaching and then student practice 
And slowly, slowly, the teacher's mind and the student's mind become almost same. That is the real blessing. Yeah. In Tibetan, we say chin lab. Chin, chin is the teacher's good quality. Lab means mix. By giving teaching to the student, very sincerely, and student practice, practice, practice. If teachers have compassion, teach compassion. And the student practice, practice. Ultimately, teachers' compassion and student compassion become almost the same, you see. And that is blessing, real blessing. So therefore, uh, to have devotion uh, uh, towards teacher, uh, if you are practicing or meditating on emptiness, is very important. Very, very important. Yeah. Yeah. First thing is that uh, if you really understood about emptiness, this is because of the teacher. And then also there's a teaching sort of uh, 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 lineage because of the teacher. And then you can ask question. Uh, so you can, uh, you, you can just, by having teacher, and especially having teacher like a uh, normal human being, is so lucky that you can ask question. You can debate. You can say no. I and this uh, I don't agree. The teacher will try to understand, uh, try to try it, and say, "Oh, now I'm I a little bit understanding. Okay, and now I agree." So in this way, teacher drives you. You see, so uh, devotion. Mm. This is uh, in Tibetan Buddhism is very very important. So I don't want to talk uh, quite a lot about my teachers. Okay, generally I talk about His Holiness. But if I talk about my teachers, then I, I become very very emotional. Yeah, very very emotional. You see, yeah. and then I don't want to use them to to earn name. You see, just I I taught from that teacher, that teacher, and just make myself great. And this is so bad, you see, so bad. And I know my quality, I know my knowledge, and I know their knowledge is like a mountain, you see, it's like ocean. If I use them to promote myself, then I'm doing very stupid things, you see. Yeah. I think we had some incident, isn't it? Yeah, in the first, you see, first when we were coming, uh, and then they were asking about uh, who were your teacher like this, and I wrote all the teacher, okay, wrote, not all but some teacher, and then I asked Carol, don't announce, just keep for yourself, don't announce, okay, just say, Kishila uh, received some teaching from Dalai Lama. This everybody receives, you see, it will not make me great, you see, so then and then. She, and then, of course, it's there in her hand, but she never used, never, never. Because I asked her, please don't use, okay? I, am, I feel so ashamed. If to earn name or reputation to profile to me using those great teachers, oh, this is really not, not okay. Because I'm so, they are so good, okay? As I told you, the gurus are very heavy. They are really heavy. Now almost uh, not many left. No, maybe five, six are thirty. Out of thirty-two, I think now five or six are still alive. Most of them are now passed away. Of course, it's unlucky, but then in one way I was lucky because at least I met them and I I learned a little bit. Yeah, a very little bit. Yeah. Uh, therefore, I sometimes I uh, I don't know. There are some people who are very sincere, wanting to practice. Uh, for them, I'm saying that please, once if you if you accept that as spiritual teacher. Don't change like underwear, okay? Very bad, very bad, okay? Examine, okay, examine. Examine whether good or bad before you accept as a spiritual teacher. Examine, try, read, uh, ask, background, all, all, you see? And then once you 
uh, accept that as a spiritual teacher, then stay there. And one of my friend he, he sent an envelope to Nepal. And then in there, she wrote, OK, my teacher, who was my teacher, and then uh, there was some problem, OK, some problem, blah, blah, problem. And now still I wanted to be, I, I don't want to uh, disturb my faith in this teacher. So how can I do this? I think she was the only one I told that uh, you should feel very, very lucky that teacher has a mistake. If the teacher doesn't make any mistake, if teacher's like our local teacher, huh? <laughs> how can you receive teaching, you see? Manjushri, very wise, but you can't ask even a single question, you see? And Buddha, great. Great teacher, okay. But how can you ask? Okay, you can prostrate, you can do some offering, but you can, if you have some questions, and then you go to the statue, and then just please bless me to prayer. But teachers are having mistakes, therefore, they are with us. With us. Therefore, I'm very lucky that I can ask questions, I can disagree, I can agree. You see, and this is a very good, good thing. I, I told her that if, you, if possible you cultivate in this way, if not possible, then I have no answer. Yeah? Receive many teaching, and then, uh, yeah, mistakes are, can be mistake, but then sometimes people see some mistakes, even if there's no mistake, people see mistake, you see, mm. from their perspective. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, now I talked a little bit too much, but, uh, but I, I love these types of questions uh, because I, I try, okay, I try to have devotion towards my spiritual teacher. Yeah. <clears throat> and this is the foundation. In Lamrim, okay, Songkhapa teaching says, if you make a mistake of counting the first day of the month, instead of the first day, if you count Second. And the, all the uh, following days were mistaken, you see. Same way. If you are mistaken on the beginning part, like spiritual teacher, then your practice will be mistaken, you see. Yeah. Thank you. Um, you talked earlier about happiness, and then uh, I guess my question is a fairly simple one. is: Can happiness itself be the goal, or is it simply a byproduct or the result of emptiness leading to wisdom and therefore sort of destroying ignorance? <clears throat> uh, is it okay if I ask a question to you? <laughs> Which happiness? <laughs> uh, no, no. Uh, I think the goal is empty happiness, I think. Yes. But the happiness has a many categories, you see. So I, I think I defined uncontaminated happiness, you see, yeah, which, is, uh, which is everlasting. And it brings only happiness, but it will not bring any sort of problem. More you enjoy, you will have more enjoyment. And it will never decline, you see. So some of the contaminated happiness, we feel very happy. More you enjoy, and then slowly, slowly it goes down, you see. Ultimately, it goes down, down. And then, and then, and then there's not much happiness, you see. These are because these are contaminated, you see. If it is uncontaminated, more you enjoy, the happiness will remain. More happiness, okay, more happy, more happy. Almost like it remains like a permanent, you see. If it is not contaminated, Pure, uncontaminated happiness, okay? And this is goal, not only for yourself, okay? If you say only for myself, then this becomes very small. Uh, and then you will not achieve enlightenment, but, but you will not achieve Buddhahood. If you say the happiness for the sake of all sentient beings, wholeheartedly, and then 
This happiness will lead you yourself happy and the many will be happy. And, uh, and then it covers a vast, okay, huge. Yeah. Yeah. So ultimate goal is to achieve happiness for every sentient being. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, uh, so today is 17th, 18th, 19th we have one session, isn't it? So I think I have to be really precise on that day. Uh, today we were a little bit, uh, uh, what, mm, what do you say? Uh, scattered, I say. We scattered, okay. So I will try to make it more solid, condensed, so that you will get us. Okay, this I have to practice. Yeah. Mm. Today I was not skillful. No. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, I think now we, I think it's, we stop. We have to go, isn't it? How, how long we have? Long drive. We are going to New Jersey, isn't it? Yeah. So it, it's, it is, I think my friend said it's really quite far from here. Yeah. So therefore, uh, I, I sleep very well in the car. <laughs> Still, please excuse me. <laughs> okay.